First game that we are going to be doing, look at that, brand new background as well too. We are going eight minutes, you got, is that 80 minutes, J-Dog? No, it's eight minutes, it's a background thing, you know, like mirror, you know the thing there. Oh, mirror image, good. and go. Yeah, done. All right, Thursday night, Pies versus the D's. I'm absolutely excited for this. I know a lot of the footy world's excited for this. Actually, every single game I think we're excited for but this weekend, but... A lot of the talk has been both these teams. Whoever wins this game will win the flag. I'm not 100% on that one, but I think it's a big chance whoever wins this will probably have the easier road to getting into the grand final. They won't have to go through Brisbane. So what we're going to do is with all these little previews, I'll be looking after one team. Obviously, I'll be looking after Melbourne this one. Jamie is going to be looking after the other. We'll give a couple of quotes why we think that they're going to win. And uh, we're not going to leave it at that. We're also going to say what's probably one of the things that we're concerned about as well. Too. So I'm going to hand it over to Jamie. Jamie has got the home ground for this one. He's got the black shorts on wearing the whites. I'm going to hand it over to the great man to give his uh, round one Thursday night preview for why the Hollywood Magpies are going to take on the D's and win. Yep. All right. So, me, it's the, it's the offensive skill that this team have. We know they can heavily score. The concern I have is since round 13, they haven't been that same team that we've seen for those first 13 rounds, um, and they have dropped off significantly. But we know that they do have their impact players. They've got Dugowie in the forward line. They've got uh, Hill, who may or may not. We've got Allard in the forward line. We've got Majacek. Um, we've got Pendles. We've got side bottom. We've got two very, very, very seasoned and finals experienced players. This whole Collingwood team is a really well-rounded, uh, finals-campaigned uh, group of men. Uh, I have a watch on Maynard. I think he's probably one of the most dynamic um, in that in that half-back line, and I was probably the player that's going to be the barometer for this team moving forward. Why they won't win? Dacos, as much as it's not a team of individuals, his individual skill connects the team. And he can bring a team along with him. So not having day cost for that first week is a real concern for me. The other one is his team seem to have worked out Darcy Moore. Um, instead of letting him be the loose defensive halfback who floats and takes intercept marks, team starting to go through him more and making him more accountable for his defensive um, or his offensive um, uh, counterpart. Um, so he has looked shaky when he has been forced to defend, and that whole Collingwood system um, can sometimes fall down. But they, he he has got a back up there with Quaynell and with Maynard if they get involved. Um, the other thing for me is, do they have cover for Max Gorn? Do they play Cox? Is he in? Is he not? Um, and that's the concern there around that, because as we know, Gorn is one of those versatile ruckmen who can go forward and go back and probably was stiff to miss out on the All-Australian team because they decided, Melbourne, that is, decided to play him as a dual ruckman up into the last seven rounds of the season. My question is, do they play Hill or do they play Juniman? I... Would prefer to have Hill on the half forward line because he gives the flexibility to have Dugowie forward up on the ground and get him more involved in the game if need be. Where Ginevan doesn't quite have that tank to run into that, and he has and he is tied to um, he's, he's stuck in the pocket there. So I would probably prefer to see Hill over Ginevan. Not to say that Ginevan hasn't been had a bad last round of the season. So for mine, I have got Collingwood to win, but it's not. I'm not convinced that they... In fact, no, I take all that back. I don't have Collingwood in this game. I, I, I just think Collingwood have dropped away significantly too much in the last five weeks of the season. Jamie Dunn, Pep's turn. Thank you very much, Jamie. Four minutes, 20. Fantastic. Awesome stuff. Look, from a Melbourne perspective, I've, I've gone from... Uh, I haven't looked at the full season because I think that's a bit of a waste of time. It's, it's like Bathurst. If you look at the Bathurst race, you watch the start, gets off to a bit of a flyer. You don't really care about the middle of the race and it comes down to the last five weeks. It comes down to a game of attrition. It comes down to which team is going to be in the best shape heading into the final laps. And that's what well, I've had a bit of a look at. I haven't looked at the main season. I've just looked at the last five weeks. If you ever look at the Collingwood compared to Melbourne form, Ryan, your Collingwood have lost last th uh, three out of their last five. Melbourne won four out of their last five with their only loss being a four-point uh, loss to Carlton, which, let's be honest, they won. So that would be on a winning streak of, of five in a row if that didn't go through. The weather for Thursday night looks like it's going to be wet. And there's one thing that you don't want to be doing is playing the uh, number one contested ball team in the league um, and 
team that is built for finals football. They did it two years ago in 2021, and I reckon they're setting themselves up prime for 2023 as well too. One of the things that they do really, really well this year is that they're scoring heavily in the last quarter. They scored 151% uh, compared to the rest of the league as well too. So they're literally scoring at, uh, for every one point that's coming through for them, they're almost uh, doubling it as well too. So they've got a really, real since they're doubling it, one and a half coming through. So they're really outscoring their opponents in the second half uh, half of the season. But the fourth quarter, they are blowing teams away. Last year, they weren't able to do that. But over the last, last five weeks, we've got situations where they're scoring more. So they've had 29 shots compared to Collingwood's 25 uh, goals being kicked. You've got their, they've beaten them in the clearances side of things. Contested possessions, they've beaten by 24 contested possessions. So they're getting their hands on the ball. And when you've got a midfield of Viney, Petrarca, Oliver, um, Brayshaw, um, Viney, they're just bulls, Sparrow in there. You're going to throw, like I mentioned, Brayshaw. There's just a lot of meat that Collingwood are going to have to continually run into, run into, run into. The other thing that I'm, I'm, I'm more concerned about um, – from Collingwood's perspective, if it does rain, it is they do like to handball the ball quite a fair bit. Melbourne are more of a flick it out but kick it down the ground side of things. And so I can see the Melbourne getting on the, the long kick down the ground. Smaller forward line, so I'm not too worried about Darcy Moore, etc. I think a few of them have worked them out, worked him out. Make him accountable. Melbourne do have a smaller forward line, so it means that the, the uh, pickets uh, of Chandler, Cozzy running around. Fridge comes back. Melksham goes out. They'll probably bring Tom McDonald in, but I wouldn't be surprised if they may bring Grundy in to move Max down forward if it's going to be one of those nights as well too. you got a, the, probably the one of the, the best defences in the league as well too, so I'm not too concerned from their backline perspective. May's going to be amazing. The ones like uh, Rivers coming off halfback, my MVP for the year for Melbourne, which is no one would have picked, would have been um, Judd McVie as well too. You've got May. You've got Lever. They're just going to be doing it all around the ground. And I just think their contested ball work is going to wear Collingwood down. They're the better informed team of the two. My only concern, though, is this. If Melbourne aren't able to stop their running game, it is going to be very, very difficult for May and Lever to be accountable. And they have been caught out. It happened in the game when the, in the Kings' birthday weekend. They did get caught out uh, in the last part of that game. But they had 18 behinds that game. And they should have locked that game away. I'm actually picking Melbourne to win by four goals. Um, this weekend. I've, I actually do really feel confident about this one. And um, I think it's going to be a grind for quite a while. But uh, eventually, uh, the, the, the team that's in better form and contested form, one team had a 70-point Witches Hats game. The other one had a hard contested game. I think I'd be wanting to go on the hard contested team leading into this weekend. So you got Melbourne by four? No, Melbourne by four goals. I'm going Melbourne by six goals. All right. Well done. 25 seconds to go. Beautiful. How good is that? What do you reckon, Done. chat? What do you reckon? A couple of things that have come through on the chat. D's to win. Um, Pies are like the D's last year. Had their run too early. Yeah, there's a few injury concerns with, with Collingwood as well too. And, and they're not cherry ripe at the moment. Uh, Maynard has to watch his descent. I reckon you're. it's a pretty good one there, Tommy. I reckon they'll, they'll give the descent out in this game, especially for something like that. D's by six gold. And the winner has a saloon passage to the flag. We'll see about that one. But it's going to be an absolute corker game. I'll be going, can't wait, um, and I'm spewing I can't go to this game because, crikey, I would have been jacked for this one. And we are talking about the next game to look at. It is, give me a moment, 